All right, so we're gonna talk about how to optimize your ultrasound guided vascular access and your nerve blocks. We're gonna go through some technical skills and tips on in-plane techniques. We're gonna talk about out-of-plane techniques and we'll also talk about certain equipment that will be helpful along the way. First, positioning pearl. As I've mentioned previously, you wanna make sure the patient is between you and the machine so that your needle, probe, and target are all in one plane. When it comes to locating your vessel, especially as it relates to peripheral lines, the perfect vessel is a vessel that is not paired with an artery or a nerve. It's a vessel that has a straight trajectory, is not tortuous, uh, and it's a superficial vessel. I think one of the biggest pitfalls people make is they don't look in more than one extremity before settling on their vessel target. So implant technique, this is one of my favorites. I like implant technique because you can not only see the needle tip really well, you can also see the shaft of the needle very well. The challenge is staying in the same plane as the probe throughout the entirety of the procedure. Inevitably, you're gonna move a few millimeters and you're gonna need to adjust your probe in order to maintain visualization of the tip and the shaft. If you get to the situation where your target and your, and your needle are on different planes, you're gonna to have to restart the procedure. So for in-plane vascular access, you're gonna set yourself up like so. You're gonna really try to be mindful and intentional about staying in that same plane as the probe. And the beauty of doing the in-plane technique for vascular access is that not only do you see the tip of the needle, you also see the shaft, enabling you to get through the anterior wall of the vessel and preventing you from getting through the posterior wall of the vessel. The in-plane technique is wonderful for serratus plane blocks or other fascial plane blocks. So we like to do this for large volume blocks. You see us dissecting the lat from the serratus. And after you've made that little bit of anesthetic wheel there, you can now start to hydro dissect further to peel away that muscle from the fascial plane. Out of plane techniques. Now the out of plane technique is what a lot of us use for vascular access, especially for central lines. The issue with the out of plane technique is inevitably you're going to go through the back wall of the vessel. And it's realizing when this happens. A lot of times when this happens, you'll see this on ultrasound and you'll think you're still, you're still ultrasounding the tip of the actual needle when in fact you're actually ultrasounding the shaft. If you see that little shadow, that little ring down artifact that lets you know you're actually ultrasounding the shaft of the needle. So one tip that I use is I use something called walking the dog. So what I do is I take my needle and I'm following the needle, advancing my probe, following the needle, advancing my probe, following the needle, and I do that the entirety throughout the vessel before I actually cannulate the vessel. When it comes time to can cannulate the vessel, I actually switch to long axis and I look at the cannula going through the vessel. Now, it definitely is a lot of steps, but usually when you're getting called in, you're called in for a patient who's ha gotten poked multiple times. So you really have one shot a lot of times. The other pearl that I like to use is using a catheter with a wire. It's my favorite. It's my favorite because most of the times when you're getting called as a doc to help with peripheral access, they're patients that have scar tissue from being punctured multiple times and you get hung up actually trying to thread the catheter over the scar tissue. When you have a guide wire, you have a little bit of, uh, you have a little bit of wiggle room in doing that. So here's an example of a vein on top of an artery. I'm gonna go in long axis, I'm gonna go in plane. So you're gonna see my needle come into view going through that anterior wall. And then you're gonna see me thread my wire. And the goal here is watching your wire thread along that posterior wall and stay along that posterior wall. That way you have time to navigate any tension on the tissue. Ideally, you'd wanna see that wire along the entire posterior wall. So nerve block tips. I love doing nerve blocks. These are quick tips. I mentioned this before, be mindful of unreliable post-procedural neuro exams. So anyone that has a prior neuro deficit or is altered in any way, they're not gonna be good candidates for nerve blocks. Also be mindful of block specific contraindications such as interscaling blocks. They always block your, your diaphragm because if you get hemi hemidiaphragmatic paralysis, so anyone with respiratory pathology isn't a good candidate. And then any blocks during uh, injuries that are at high risk for compartment syndrome. So a lot of tibial, tibial uh, fractures you wanna be mindful of. And then lastly, when you're going to do an actual targeted nerve block, you wanna initially aim for the posterior portion of the nerve. I talked about bathing the entire nerve in anesthetic, but if you aim posteriorly, number one, it actually lifts your target nerve closer to you. 
And number two, if there's any air in your needle, that air doesn't obscure your view. Then you're gonna redirect your needle and go for an anterior approach to get the rest of the anesthetic anteriorly. Last thing is that hydrodissection should be low resistance. So this is a fascia iliaca block going in through the fascia here. And then you'll see this beautiful spread of anesthetic. See how smooth that is. You can advance your needle and continue to hydrodissect. If you were to go into the muscle there, you'd get a lot of resistance, letting you know you're not in the right space. So take home points. Remember your positioning, in-plane versus out-of-plane techniques. Try walking the dog. When in doubt, try to use a guide wire to help you out. And then hydrodissection. Thank you so much.